A couple of months ago, I did a program on, on bluebirds, wintering bluebirds, because there were so many of them around this year. Uh, and it's gotten really people really excited about trying to get them to nest in their yard. Now, we talked about then how there, some of those birds were northern birds that, that, that just come down here in the winter. And so they have uh, they retreat back up north for their nesting ground. And then we start to get more birds filter in from the south back up to here, our, our typical nesting birds. But we get lots of questions about um, the, how do we get the bluebirds to nest in your yard and what are some things we can do to help them. Even if you already have them, what are some things you can do to help them. So I thought I would cover uh, how to be a good bluebird steward here today. Well, the bluebird, uh, the program, nest box program has been really, really important. Uh, into the recovery of these species. Uh, they, in urban areas, you, you really do have a, a hard time getting the nest, and that's because of nest competition with especially the house sparrow. But I always like to say from about here in this part of the city to the, out, uh, to the rural areas, you have a good shot at getting bluebirds. From here to the more urban part of the city, you have a less of a chance to get in the nest. But what we do is, with a nest box is we try to emulate nature. Where do bluebirds nest? New, bluebirds nest are cavity nesters. They nest in old woodpecker holes and they nest in you know knot holes in trees. Well, a rule of thumb for a, a, any bird for a, that are a cavity nesting bird is they want that hole diameter to be just big enough for them to be able to squeeze into. When that hole's too large, they don't feel safe in there. If it's too small, obviously she can't get through there, you know, especially when she's carrying an egg to lay uh, their, their egg. So the most important part of uh, bluebird boxes are the dimensions. A one and a half inch diameter hole is perfect for bluebirds. Um, then you also need a cavity, a, a, a box that's big enough for them to lay a nest in and to be far enough down in the nest to be safe from or would be predators they're trying to reach in there to grab them so the size of the box and of course we've studied this for many years and we know the dimensions and any box we have here are for bluebirds are built that way and then everything else about a box on top after that is mainly for human convenience uh, to help you to be a, a better steward so um, here, what are, what are some of the things we can do? What are, what are the, the, uh, the, the, the secrets to attracting a bluebird? One is they like open country. They like uh, for there to be uh, scattered trees, but mainly open short grass. Uh, they are related to robins, but unlike robins that hop along the ground, look for bugs or worms and pull them out, Bluebirds are perch hunters. They're perch thrushes where they sit up and they you'll see them looking over and their heads tilted down and they fly to the ground, grab their bug and come back up with it. So they need shorter grass for that. So I, I talk about golf courses and parks being really good examples of the habitat that bluebirds like. Open areas with scattered trees are perfect for them. If it's um, too many trees, you're tend to not going to have them. Uh, they tend to get crowded out. They don't. They, it's not their 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 favorite habitat. So if you have too many trees, you might not be able to get them. Um, in, but you know, a few can. So what do we do with our boxes to help us get the advantage on, on bringing them in? One is when we study uh, cavity nesting birds. We know that they like the morning sun shining in their boxes. So when you put your bluebird box up, you want it to face east or southeast if you can. They like that morning sun to warm the box up quickly. They never want the, the hot afternoon sun blaring in the box or the north wind, a cold north wind like we're, you know, we've gotten these last few days blowing in the box. So avoid those two directions. And I know sometimes that's not convenient for you when you're looking at your window to see when you want to watch the nest, but that's what's best for attracting the birds. Now you never say never. You, you know, you may say, well, I've got a box that's facing west and they nested in it and, and it can happen. I'm just trying to give you advice on how to uh, improve your chances of getting them to nest in a box. So that direction. And the next thing is very important is the height. We want that hole about five feet off the ground. That's mainly because of predators, house cats, especially can jump up about four and a half feet and they'll sit, sit under a box and wait for the adults to come in, jump up, grab that, that bluebird right off the face of that box. So we hate that. So you want to put them at least five feet. If you want to put them 10 feet in the air, 
the bluebirds would love that, but that's gonna be very hard for you to maintain. So we think five feet is, is about optimum so you can still see in there. Cause we want you to monitor those boxes. You can check those, those boxes like once every five days, you can open up and look inside and count the number of eggs, count the number of babies um, until they get you know older and then you don't wanna open it up in case they might jump out on you. But uh, we want you to monitor the boxes and, and, and make sure they're doing okay. So what's gonna happen? Well, the first nesting starts in any time now. They're, they're probably building nest. They're bringing in grasses, but they won't tend to lay eggs until they know there are enough insects moving out there to be able to. All right, so they build a perfect little nest in the, in, in the bluebird box made of grass. They don't stuff the box full. That would be a house sparrow or maybe a Carolina wren, but a grass nest so just at the bottom. And then she'll lay one egg a day, this beautiful little blue egg, she'll lay one a day until she's ready to start sitting because she wants all of her babies to hatch at the same time. It's called synchronous hatching because she wants all of them to have uh, an equal chance for them to survive. So when they hatch, they'll all be the same age and they'll all have an equal chance to get the food as she brings those insects in there. So the process is about 12 to 14 days to hatch and then they you know, they look they look like this for several uh, days, and then 12 to 14 days for them to fledge and leave the nest. So the whole process from start to finish is a little about five weeks for them to uh, start laying eggs to the babies leave the nest. And then they, once they leave that nest, those babies will not come back to that nest. So you can clean that box out immediately after she they, they leave the nest, and she'll lead them around, and she'll teach them how to fe the, the, the feed, and uh, she'll, she'll take care of them for, oh, 10 days, 14 days maybe, and then she'll start to wean them, and, 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 and the male and female will, will say, you know, you're on your own, and then they'll start to look for a nesting site again. They'll nest three and even sometimes four times in a single year, and they may nest in your box every time uh, during a season. That's why you want to clean that nest out and make sure because she won't reuse that nest. She'll build a brand new nest on top of the old nest and it will get higher and higher and closer to the, the, the opening, which is very dangerous for them. So clean that nest out every time. You might want to wear gloves. I mean, there's a chance there may be nest lice or feather lice in there and you don't want those You get on you. So you're going to I mean, use a glove to get that, clean that out of there. And if you need to spray it out and, and clean it out, you can do that. You don't have to, if there's, there's nothing in the box except for the old grass, you can just clean it out and then she'll build all over again. Typically, they nest in two different locations. It's not good survival instinct to stay in one place too long. You increase your chances of predators finding you, so she probably will nest in a bo this box once and then another box a second time or, or not holding a tree, and then maybe come back to this one for the, for the August nesting. So uh, you, you, just because you don't get them in April doesn't mean you're not going to get bluebirds the rest of the season. So that's really cool. Now, I wanted to show you a picture of the babies. Notice how different the baby looks. See all the spots on the chest and the spots on the back? And she's not all, not all blue. Well, of course, that's for camouflage, the first set of feathers that the babies have. They, they blend in better this way instead of being so bright. But this is a fledgling bluebird. This is what they'll look like just a few days after I'm being out. And uh, when you're seeing them with the adults, the babies really stand out. So you can, you know, you can help to get the, the, the bluebirds out. Be a good nester. Please monitor the boxes. Don't let house sparrows nest in them. Um, if a chickadee or a Carolina wren nests in it, you got to let them nest. That's fine. But we don't want the house sparrows nesting in there. You want to rip those out every time they try to nest in the box. A couple things you can do to, to help your box out. Um, nest lifts are great. These fit in the bottom of the nest box so that when she builds her nest, it's not down on the bottom of the nest box, and that keeps it drier by having a little nest lift in there. And then you can add predator guards around the portal, uh, which is, it extends that, makes that hole long, deeper and longer so that a raccoon can't reach in there and get them. So just a couple things you can add if you feel like you need that little extra safety factor. But be a good bluebird steward. Um, if you like the programs, please give us a, a like and a share. Send in ideas for future programs. Until then, come by and let's talk birds.